All right, let's everybody get ready to give now and honor the Lord and do what we're supposed to tonight. Amen.
got all them little uh, sweethearts out of here. Uh, so let's uh, uh, now give and honor the Lord and do what we're supposed to, okay? Amen. Want to be remembering in prayer as again, those that really need our prayers tonight, a lot of them do. And they some pitiful, pitiful situation. I got to thinking about uh, the other day for some reason about all the old uh, people. People talk about people used to didn't get divorced like they do now, and that's true. But you know why a lot of them didn't? It wasn't that they didn't have trouble. Lord, they stuck up in a mountain holler somewhere in Kentucky, and they couldn't leave. Wasn't they? Wasn't nowhere for them to go. And some of those women endured a terrible life. Some old man coming in beating them and coming in drunk and lived like that for years and years and years and years and years. And boy, I, t I can't, can you imagine what that, some of them went through? Some of them, a lot of them got killed. Killed them. And a lot of them tortured them for years. And, and that's going on right now in this world. You heard on the news the other day that girls, uh, where they found them three or four girls that had been in that house for ten and everybody thought they was dead. And that guy kept them in there 10 years. You think that's the only one like that? There's, there's stuff like that all over this world. This world is not your friend. And it's not a good place. It's an evil place. Well, you ride through the inter, down the interstate and you just see everybody and laughing. And Walmart's full and everything. That ain't the world. You go down in them little roads and hollers and stuff. That's, that's where the people are hurting. So let's remember that. That's why we have bus ministry. Let's honor the Lord tonight and give something special. We got some buses need work on them and stuff. So let's let's help out tonight. Everybody do your part and He'll bless you for it. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Pray you bless the kids in their class tonight. Have your way in our lives. We love you. Bless this offering. Supply the need God we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, for any of you that were not here, we have had bunches of requests for the service Sunday morning. If you missed the service, there's just there's no way to get it. It's impossible. If you miss Sunday morning, uh, you miss one of the greatest services we've had in in many a years, like that one the other Sunday. Now we do have it on CD back here. Did anybody ever show up to make some CDs? Somebody ever show up to make some CDs? Got some? We got three or four CDs of the message back there uh, if you want them tonight. Uh, so be sure and get the message from Sunday morning. And uh, there, I, before I eat dinner Sunday morning, there was text popping on my phone. Because I won't, I won't leave the ringer on, you know. And it was and, uh, and, and, and there was about five people said it was just for them, so somebody was wrong. Uh, uh, the truth is, when the Word of God goes out, sometimes you feel like it's just to me. Or just give it to them. Uh, uh, just give it to John. There you go. Thanks. Um, you feel like the preacher is just talking to me. Have you ever felt like that? Man, he's talking just to me. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's supposed to be. And I've had people tell them, I've had say. Have you been over at my house sneaking, looking in my window at night? And I said, I sure have not. And uh, I'd be, I'd gag if I did probably. And uh, they, they would say, uh, well, you, somehow or another, you know. <laughs> but it's the Word of God. It's quick and powerful and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So this preaching business, it ain't, it ain't like teaching. It's supernatural. The Word of God, somehow or another, gets in there and does stuff we don't even know about. And sometimes the preacher don't even say it. But the Word of God will 
by the time it gets from here to you, he's done translated into something else. You say, I don't believe that can happen. On the day of Pentecost, Peter jumped up and preached, and there's all kinds of people out there from different countries, and every one of them understood what he said. And he was probably preaching in his own native tongue, and the Holy Ghost translated it between his tongue and their ears. So I'm aware tonight that the Word of God is supernatural. And I fuss at people. When you don't come to church, you miss something that you will never, ever recover. And you never get it back. So get it. If you can't be here, get the CD, get the tape, and listen to them. Let's take our Bible tonight, turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 3. And we're going to look at a, a truth here. This is not really a Wednesday night Bible study, but I think it'd help us. We all need to go over it every now and then. Uh, and it's about sin, sin. Worst word in the world, sin. You, look, you know what's right in the middle of it? Look what's right in the middle of sin. I, S-I-N, I, you, right in the middle of sin. And the way to handle your sin is you can't blame your sins on nobody else. The reason psychiatrists get a lot of money is because they are paid to make people not feel guilty for what they do. And say, well, it's because of this, and this is not really your fault. You was molested when you was little, or your daddy beat you, or your mom and daddy got divorced. Now, all that stuff's bad, and it can sure mess you up. But I'm going to tell you, you go up here and you get a gun and shoot somebody, you know why you did it? It wasn't because your mom and daddy got divorced. It's because you chose to do it. And you'll never get no help from God until you admit that what you do is your fault. What I do is my fault. I, I, I could say, well, people in the church were not good to me, which is true. I, I, could say, I could say, nobody hardly ever took me out to eat, which is true. I said, I used to, I had all them girls. Now, I ain't taking that whole gang out and them boys. Now it's just me, and they still don't do it. Uh, and I, I could say, I just gave up. But you know what that is? That's a bunch of bull. That's a bunch of bull. If I go sin, you know whose fault it is? It's Brother Danny's fault. You can't say, well, I was, I was in, and people in the church just wasn't good to me. Oh, hush. Uh, you, you, you done what you've done because you wanted to. Daddy always said, people do what they want to do. People do what they want to do. And if you don't want to do it, you'll blame it on somebody and make some excuse for it. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13 tonight. And it said, but exhort one another daily while it is called a day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful big time, big time, big time. When you get saved, you, you, get, you, you become a split person. You're a, sa you're a saved soul. You have a sinful body. So there's something about it in you wanting to do right. And your flesh still wants to do wrong. And so you have a battle going on. That's in Romans chapter 7. In Romans 7, Paul talks about the battle of the flesh and the spirit. The Bible said the spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. The spirit don't like to do fleshly things and the flesh don't like to do spiritual things. That's just the way it is. You're a good man living in a bad body. A Christian is what the world calls a schizophrenic. And the world thinks a schizophrenic is like two personalities. We don't have two personalities, but we have a good man living in a bad body. You're about the two schizophrenics that met each other one day in the building and they was getting on the elevator and one of them said, man, I'm feeling a little schizo today. They was going to see the doctor and the other said, that makes four of us. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that's the, way, that's the way we are. Sometimes you feel like two different people. How many of you guys ever said to your wife, you're like two different people? You, I heard some amen say, you were so nice yesterday and now you're, a witch. Maybe you don't say that. Maybe you do. My goodness, man, are you the same guy you are? It's called, we are two different people. Sometimes the flesh is in control and sometimes that spirit's in control. And it said, walk in the spirit and you wouldn't fulfill 
the lust of the flesh. So it's a battle. It's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. And according to the Bible, sin will what? Harden you. Harden you. And that's why I told you, don't ever get to the place where you don't cry. If you can get to the place where you can't cry, you're, you've been living in sin. Because when you're right with God, I don't think you have to go around bawling your eyes out all the time. But when there's a good song or something good happening, the Lord, it'll bring some tears to your eyes. If I go a few months, if I go a few months and I don't cry, you know what I know? I know I'm backslid. I'm backslid. I might go to church every Sunday, preach every Sunday, but I need to get my heart soft, softened up. Because sin will harden you. It'll make you hard. I know a lot of people brag about that. They say, I haven't cried in 10 years. I didn't cry at my daddy's funeral. Well, man, you are, you are a uh, messed up individual. I mean, hey, people, there's people pride themselves in how hard they are. I ain't nothing to brag about, brother. You say, well, I've had to be. I survived my family and they fought all the time and my mama, daddy beat me and mom, dad divorced. Now, that stuff like that will make you hard. But you better learn how to keep your heart soft. These people, there's a guy who hated me one time and, he had, and I didn't do nothing to him. He hated my guts. And, and I, his daddy died and I, they wanted me, the family wanted me to preach his daddy's funeral and that man would not come in his daddy's funeral because I was preaching it. Sat outside at the funeral home up there in Marion. Wouldn't even go in. His own daddy. Boy, doesn't that make him a big tough guy. And I never did nothing to that guy. I tried to be nice to him. He's mad at me because some of the church, him and the church members got into it and he blamed me for it. And uh, he lost custody of his kids or something. I, I don't even remember what it was. And I, I, he sat out there like this and wouldn't even come in. Danny Castle's preaching, I ain't going in. You know what that makes you look like? That don't make you look like some big tough guy. It makes you look like an idiot. Uh, the Bible said Jesus wept. Jesus wept. It is not unmanly to shed tears, fellas. Jesus was a man. I ain't crying. I ain't no sissy. Je Jesus Christ wasn't no sissy. He's a man, man, brother. He stuck his hands out there and let them put nails in it. I guarantee you, they ain't a prize fighter in America would lay down their feet like that and let people drive nails to them. He's more of a man than any football player in the NFL, and he wept. Now, what sin will do to you, sin will harden you. Now, you young people back there, and all y'all teenagers in here tonight, you listen to me. You think you can mess around with sin and, and, and just play with it, and, and, uh, and it won't hurt you. You think, well, I'm, I'm not really going to live this lifestyle. I'm just going to try this, or I'm going to try that, or I'm going to... Go here. I'm going to go there. And every time you sin against your conscience, you, it gets a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And that's why you got 17-year-old kids sit here on Sunday morning and hear me preach the Bible and it don't even phase them, brother. It runs off their back. I mean, just like water off a duck, brother. They're hard. We got kids 17 years old sitting in these Sunday school classes that feel absolutely no none. No conviction at all. It's a different day that we're living in. Have y'all noticed nowadays you just start talking to kids, they don't even have a clue. We got kids that come on our bus, they don't even, it's like it don't even register with them. This is God's house. This is, there's a hell. There, it's like, yeah, here, you know. <laughs> you know myself, they don't even, they don't even get it, what we're here for. We, I, had, I had kids in my car one night taking them to church. I had a gang of boy come here to church. And he was a good little old boy, I mean, as far as personality, and he loved me. He was about 16. And he was sitting in the back seat, and we was going down the road, and it was all cutting up. He said, Brother Danny, uh, you smoke pot? I said, no. He said, why? Honestly, he wasn't being a smart aleck. He was not being a smart aleck. The kid had no, it's like he never even, you, you, do y'all understand what I'm saying? It never registered with him that it might be. It's like saying, do you like Mountain Dew? He said, do you, you ever smoke pot? And I said, no, man. He said, why? I said, man, I don't smoke pot. He said, you'd love it. You'd love it. He said, your, your personality, he said, the way you're all wired, he said, you'd love it. He about had me talked into wanting to try it. 
<laughs> and I ain't never smoked, but I don't even know what it looks like. But uh, he kept, y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? They're kin to you. Somebody in their family. Uh, but he, he said, he said, I know you, Brother Dan. He said, you'd love it, man. You ought to smoke pot. And I said, look, man, it's, it's a sin. He said, what? I said, ain't right. And he said, why? That's the generation you and I are living in. That's the generation. They live with their boy. They, they stay with their boyfriends. They don't even know it's wrong. You say, oh, yes, they do. Go out and talk to them. Well, talk to them. That's all they see on TV. That's all they hear growing up. They we're living in a generation that don't even know what sin is, brother. And this is America. I mean, Morganton, Hickory, Marion. I, I, we, we've had them tell us, you mean it's wrong for us to live together? Who? Why? Who? Who said it was? It's hard for us to imagine that. You're sitting there saying, oh, yes, they do. They don't. I'm telling you, I've met some kids. This guy told me, he said, well, I, I said, he said why is it wrong? And I said, because God don't want us to do nothing that impairs our judgment, that makes us, you know, uh, uh, you know, where you think you're doing 60 and you're doing 20 and, you, and it messes up your ability to make correct judgment. You know, so I said, the only, time, the only thing medicine is for is temporary use for sickness. Amen. Maybe they'll legalize it one day. I don't know. I, I don't think it ought to be legal, but i tell you one thing. If alcohol is legal, it ought to be. Say that. Neither one of them should be. But, but they're, they're hypocrites because they don't want because the government gets the money off that alcohol. That's why they're always preaching against cigarettes. The South gets the money off the, off the cigarettes and they're trying to break the South. That's another message. But because um, the South, you know, has more moral standards and they're against gay marriage. But anyway, um, let's, let's talk about what sin will do uh, to you tonight. And you, you remember that you have, a, you have a, a fallen nature. You have a fallen nature. You have a, you have a uh, human fallen nature. And uh, uh, preachers use this word. It's not in the Bible. But preachers use the word depravity. You are naturally depraved. They don't believe that either. The world don't believe that. The world said the reason these people in the ghettos are shooting each other and killing each other because they never had nothing. And if you build them a nice house and give them a nice apartment and, and do that, they'll quit that. Well, that ain't true. That's been proven not to be true. It ain't got nothing to do with how poor you are. It ain't got nothing to do with how rich you are. It ain't got nothing to do with what color you are. It ain't got nothing to do with what race. It's you have a depraved nature. We're born with a nature to sin. I mean, brother, you sin. I, you are born with it. All these kids in here tonight have a sinful nature. It's natural for them. What, what, you don't have to teach them how to lie. You don't, have, you don't have to set them down when they're about three and say, now look, let me tell you what a lie is. A lie is when you say, I took my shoe off. And you say, I took both my shoes off. But you really didn't. You only took one well, how come you don't have to teach them how to do that? They already know how. Was you doing that? No. Where'd they get that from? They ain't that smart. That's born in them. Where'd they get it? From you. Where'd you get it? Your mom and dad. Where'd they get it? Their mom and dad. Right back to Adam and Eve when they got run out of that garden. You are born depraved. Now, the world's philosophy is we're all born good or neutral and all you are is a product of your environment, good or bad. The Bible teaches you're born bent toward bad, bent toward good, and it's a struggle. The Bible teaches you're born floating down the stream and it's a struggle to go the other way. The, the world teaches you're born in a bathtub and all the water ain't moving. We believe you're born in a river and it's taking you that way. And you got to fight and go the other way. Now, the proof is in the pudding, brother. Look at the world. You tell me, is it easier to do right or is it easier to do wrong? I mean, my goodness. Uh, I mean, it don't take a scientist to figure that out. You are born with a sinful, depraved nature. It's in you. It's in you. 
You can't help it. It's even in you after you get saved. Your nature, your sinful nature does not change when you get saved. When you get saved, a new man is born inside you. The Bible said you're born again of the Spirit. It's a spiritual birth. It does not correct the flaws of your flesh. If it did, all your bumps would go away. Your finger would grow back that you got cut off. Uh, you know, all your fleshly defections would, would clear up. But your flesh don't change. It still wants to sin. It still has an has a, uh, inclination toward doing wrong. It's in there. So that means we've got a fight on our hands. We got that? We got a fight on our hands. It's a fight every day. Paul said, I die daily. Daily. You can't let up one day. You let up one day, the devil will get his foot in the door. And boy, once he gets his foot in the door of your marriage, of your own individual life, of, of your, your, your heart, son, he's hard. It's easy to get him in and hard to get him out. It's easy to get in. Uh, they say a, a sin is like a soft, nice, warm bed. It's easy to get into and hard to get out of. And, and brother, that's the way sin is. It's easy to slip into, but it's hard to get out of. I've had a lot of people talk to me about drugs and stuff and the struggle that they've had uh, with, with, with drugs. I know a lot of people right now, uh, right now that are having a terrible time with, with abuse of drugs. There is a good use of medicine. God said there was a good use of medicine, but I'm, I'm, not sure the Lord, I'm not sure the Lord would even have us to use some of this stuff they're coming out with now. I, it, it makes you worse than your sickness did. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a doctor, and I don't want to... I'm, I'm not trying to prescribe nothing or nothing like that, but I'm telling you, buddy, I know some people have been better off just to tough it out than, than, than what their medicine did to them. I, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, and, and that's easy for me to say because I don't have no pain right now. And if I did have pain, I, I take medicine. But I'm scared of it. I'm scared of it and I'm leery of it. Because that stuff is a It'll get a hold of you. And it'll get a hold of you and take over your life. And it'll get a hold of you until where you think it ain't, that's all there is. And so uh, sin, when a, when a Christian gets into sin, it's not like a sinner getting into sin. A sinner can get into sin and just sin, 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 and then consequence of that. But when a Christian sins, man, it complicates things. It's like that little old boy told preacher, his preacher told him, he said, uh, he said, well, have you quit sinning since you got saved? He said, no, I ain't, but it sure has complicated it. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? You, if you're saved, you understand that. You understand that. It ain't like it. Used to, you'd just go down to the bar and get drunk and everything, go home, sleep it off. Try it now if you, no, don't. But if you try it now, it ain't going to work like it did back then. Something going to happen. Something bad going to happen. It ain't going to, it ain't going to work like it did because, because Jesus is in your heart and the Holy Ghost is inside you and he will not leave you alone. I'm telling you, it'll drive you bananas until, until you get that thing, till you get that thing straight. Now, I never have really got to my little study tonight. I've just been talking about our sinful nature. But we have one. We have one. I had a lady tell me not long ago. She told me, she said, Brother Danny, I've been saved for ever how many years? She said, I didn't realize how mean I really am. She said, sometimes, she said, sometimes at my mama or sometimes at my... She said, I just feel rage coming up in me. And she said, what is that? I said, there's a devil in you. She said, I just feel rage coming up in me. I just want to, oh, I say mean things to my mama. I'm hateful to her. She didn't do nothing to me. Y'all ever do that? Towards your husband? Just bless him out for no reason at all? And, and then the Lord say, Man, he didn't do nothing to you. Look how you're acting. That's that sinful nature in you. I'm telling you, brother, we got it. We got it. We got it. We're selfish. We got that sinful nature. And you battle it every day of your life. I mean, we pretty well got it down packed. Nobody here was drunk last night that I know of. Nobody here was on crystal meth last night that I know of. 
I mean, we pretty well got that part down bad. But this, this, this rage and jealousy and pride and selfishness and who oh am I? It just, it just, it just all over you. And the, and the only way to do that is walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I know people say, "I'm gonna quit cussing. I'm gonna quit cussing. I ain't gonna cuss no more, no more, no more cussing." And they do pretty good for a few hours or a day or two, and something happened. They'll go, "Hop!" And I saw one guy said, "If it gets to right there, you might as well let it out." I mean, don't. But but I mean, it's in you. It's in you. I didn't see him. Yeah, you did too. <laughs> uh, the only way to the only way to get Christian is get the Lord get it out of you. And the Bible said, "Be transformed by the renewing of your mind." I gotta, I'm going to preach a message on that pretty soon, and I hope y'all pray for me and be here when I do it about letting the Word of God transform you by the renewing of your mind. Do you know this sounds awful? This sounds like a cult, but it's really biblical. You just, sometimes you have to literally reprogram your thinking by the word of God. Ain't that right, brother? I mean, I'm not, you say, oh, Lord, we're in a cult. I don't mean it like that. I'm, I don't mean it like mind control. You have to let the word of God get in you and think like the Bible teaches instead of your own natural way you do. You really do. Uh, get you some verses like husbands and wives, if, you, if you're fussing a lot and stuff like that, Retrain your brain to think right by the Word of God, not like not by watching Desperate Housewives. And because if you do, they're putting it in your brain. So the next time you and your husband get around, you say what you say, heard them say. You have to let the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you have to reprogram. The Bible says it like this: Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be you transformed by the renew. The, the Word of God will transform the way you think. That's rough. That's work. And if anybody wants to say something, Ken. Right. But we don't get our ethics from the world. We get our ethics from the Word of God. That's right. And the Word of God's not against that, but it is against being a homosexual. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's the funny thing about how we get twisted up. Well, but most people in church are going to take the world's side on that issue. That's right. Rather than the it's like a man in an abortion. That guy had him abortion. Here's a, here's a baby that survived an abortion. Here's a baby that survived an abortion. Here's a baby that survived an abortion. It's been on the news, and they, they killed him. And it's, it, CNN won't even hardly mention it. Right. If he'd have took a gun and shot four babies, it'd have been on the news 24 hours a day. Guns, 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 guns. So the world is telling us how we're supposed to think. Brother Dan, the Apostle Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am. He didn't say wretched man that I was. That's right. He wrote 16 books to the Bible. And you know what? There's a lot of preachers that teach that he wrote that before he got saved. That, that he wrote that before he got saved. No. That he was referring to his the day because they can't imagine that the apostle Paul would be wretched. That's what they say. A lot of them preachers that teach sinless perfection and stuff, they say, "Oh, he was talking about before he got saved." And he didn't. He wasn't either. He, he wasn't. He said, "Oh, wretched man that I quote am." When I would do good, evil is present. And the good that I would do. How many, how many of y'all have said, I'm going to do better. I'm going to read my Bible every day. And you mean it. I mean, you ain't lying. People say you're a lying hypocrite. No. I've said that a hundred thousand times. Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pray so much a day. I'm gonna, and then you don't do it. But you know, when you get by with it once, you got by with it ten times. That's right. That's true. But the truth is, you ain't got by with it. You just think you have. Yeah. Yeah, there's an honest Christian right there. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that too. I'll say, Lord, if you'll just cut me a little slack right here. Yeah, yeah I will never do it again. Try to bark. 
You think you got by with it. The game ain't over, brother. <laughs> the game ain't over. The, the wheels of God's judgment grind slow, but they grind exceedingly sure and exceedingly fine. Sometimes it don't come in for 20 years, but it comes in. And, and just because, because judgment isn't executed speedily, the hearts of men are set on them to do evil. You know that scripture in Ecclesiastes. Sometimes you think you get by, well, I did it and nothing didn't happen. I did it again, nothing didn't happen. It must not be all that bad. That's right. Then one day, out of the clear blue, it hits. It hits. Yeah. Like they sing. It was such a lovely day. <laughs> The sun was shining bright. Ain't that right, brother? Come on now if you need to get down here and get right. Amen, brother. You just come right on. You just get down here and beg God to forgive you for the life you've been living. Coming here with them mini skirt on. <laughs> no, whatever them things are. <laughs> Him, bless God, barefooted. Uh, but anyway, uh, it will. It'll, and she's right. She's right. Sometimes you think, see there. Lord didn't kill me. That's your plan. Yeah. He forgives you. God does forgive you. But boy, they still a payday coming down there somewhere. Somewhere. That's right. And that's right. That's something I personally struggle with, and the Lord's had to warn me before. The Lord's had to get on to me and say, "You're not right," you know. And the Lord deals with me about it. But I heard Fred Potter and him say this, and it, and it tell me because I'm fed, my flesh is wicked. But he used to say this. He'd say, "God, if God killed you, why aren't you dead yet?" You yeah, know? yeah. And that's helped me. I've heard him say that. I don't want to walk around feeling like God's always going to kill me, you know. But uh, that's so hard for me to keep balance. It the the. It's bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes it's false guilt. The devil's putting that guilt on you. If you're trying and your heart's right, it's false guilt. If you've confessed something to the Lord and you forsake, it's false guilt. And the devil can make you think God's mad at you, God hates you, God's going to kill you, God. And some of them preachers make you feel like that. The, the real truth is somewhere between Fred Potter and, and some of them other, it's, it's in the middle there somewhere. He went a little bit too far that way and some of them go a little bit too far on, you know, if you make one step wrong, God will kill you. And, he, and that's not true or we would all be dead. But you can o overboard on the grace too. Yeah. Martin Luther, he taught that everybody, he said every Christian ought to be a good healthy sinner. And he believed, what he, what he was saying was he believed so strong in the grace of God that he thought it was good for you to mess up once in a while just to prove to you that you're saved by grace. <laughs> and that ain't right. That ain't right. But he, the, the, the people in his day taught that you had to live right, you had to live right, you had to live right, or you was going to hell. And you, that ain't right either. That ain't right. That's just as wrong as the other way. So we do not frustrate the grace of God by just deliberately saying, all right, well, I'm saved with grace, so I'm just going to do whatever I want to. That's wrong. But it's also wrong to think if I take one step out of line, God's going to kill. Oh, no, God, oh, no. It's wrong to live like that too. You have liberty in Christ. <laughs> Let me talk to you after church just a little bit. So. <laughs> I, I see your point. We have to live wrong I mean, to learn. Well, you definitely learn. I'm telling you that. There are easier ways to learn it. <laughs> uh, the best way to learn it Dr. Ruckman talks about chest, and I'm going to preach on this one day. The best way to learn it is the Bible. The Lord put them examples in the Bible. People messed up so we could read it so we wouldn't mess up. That's the best way. Take it from the Word of God. Take it from the preacher. Get it to church. That's the best way to learn. The best way to learn how not to, what drugs to do is not go out and try all of them. The best way to learn about them is listen to what you're told by people that's been there and your elders and somebody smarter than you are. That's the best way to learn. Don't try, don't learn everything the hard way. Uh, but, but, but don't, don't 
you know, you can get a whipping. You get a whipping. I didn't even get to my thought now. But anybody else want to say something right quick? We're going to go. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you you can do that, but if if you don't have no conscience about something, something wrong somewhere, it, it said, "Shall we continue in sin that grace should abound?" God forbid. Uh, just because we're saved by grace, don't mean we can just say, "Oh, oh well, it don't matter if I go to church. It don't matter what." A, a Christian don't think like that. If you're really glad you're saved by grace, you'd want to go to church. You want to go to do right. It may, and, and you feel terrible when you do wrong. If you can sin and don't feel bad about it, you got problems, buddy. I'm telling you right now, you got major problem, and you better get to God quick. Yeah. Right. But I don't have a problem with renting a movie or going to watch a movie, whereas somebody else might have a problem with that. It's not right for that person to say, well, you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Right. Well, the problem, the death is, is what kind of movie is it? That's what, that's what. I don't have a problem with it either. If it's, it, if what's it, what is it? There are some that are, and then there's some that's borderline. There's some, and you got to make a lot of these decisions yourself. And he's right. But, the, anything that's against the Bible, like it or not, like it or not, ain't right. Like it or not, it ain't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, that's... Yep. That's a dumb thing to do. I don't see it, but I hear about it. Now, the way to keep from doing that is, think about this. Lord, if them people know everything I've done, they wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I hope they wouldn't, you know what I mean? They're just dumb enough to put theirs out in public. Why anybody want to do that? I have no idea. If you want to do something done, please, why you want to tell the world for it? But we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to have to go, this has been good. I didn't even get to my outline tonight. This has really been good. But, but it, he's right. Christian liberty. Paul had Christian liberty. We always have. I have Christian liberty. I do stuff that other preachers think would be wrong. They do stuff that I think wrong. So like, but when it comes to the book and it's clear, we don't have a choice. There are some things you don't have a choice in. Like it or not. If you don't like it, tough. Shut up and thank God you ain't going to hell. Amen. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Everybody bow your head. And we're going to have a little time of fellowship. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you, God, for your love.